folks, Bill here, Whirly Bird Video. Got a nice armrest today. This is the FMS 1700 millimeter Corsair. This is a great big box, folks. I mean, I'm standing flat footed and this thing's not as comfortable because it's up too high. Uh, we're gonna be installing the Model Sounds Inc. sound system in the F4U Corsair from FMS. This is a 1700 millimeter. We're gonna run it on 6S. Um, from all the videos I've seen, this looks like a great flyer and with the Model Sounds Inc. sound system, it's gonna make it even better uh, modeling experience. I can't wait to try it out. It's gonna be awesome. So let's get started on building. We'll do the installation of the sound system. Uh, as we go and put it together, I think it's going to be going just as good to go ahead and start putting that sound system in even before we start assembling the aircraft because I think we're going to have to have the aircraft part to put it in. So really, step one, let's put the sound system in it. <laughs> Stay tuned. So first impression, this thing's huge. Um, so what we got to do first is figure out where we're going to mount our speakers. And these are pretty good sized speakers. These are the four inch speakers. And what I'd like to do is put one up front right here in front of the uh, fuselage and then one right behind the wing. So what I need to do first is to make sure those two places are going to be okay if I start cutting a big square out of here. So my plan is to go ahead and cut these out and get them just to where they're down inside flush. So I'll have to do quite a bit of cutting to get in with, with how round the fuselage is. And then once I get it in there, I'm going to take some uh, triangles of light ply slice up the corners, slide them in there and epoxy them in place. So the biggest thing is, is when you're doing this, especially on this type of modification where you're hacking away at a fuselage, is to make sure you're not going to decrease the structural integrity more than you have to. Back here, same deal, I'm going to have to cut a pretty good spot right in here, so I'll probably come in right behind it if I can reach back in there with a little bit of fiberglass and just lay one little fiberglass layer over. Uh, with some epoxy around it. If I can't get in there to do that, we'll see what it comes to when it gets to that time and see what I got to do. So I'll bring you in a little closer and uh, show you how we're going to mark this off and get started. So I'm just going to mark it off first, if I can find my pencil, kind of where I want to be, and then I'm going to kind of rough cut it um, with my razor knife get my outline started, get my Dremel tool and start whittling away down in there to get this down in there. And you could tell to get it down in there level, I've got to cut, you know, pretty good away to get that in there. So again, probably something about right there. And I don't think that will interfere. There's a slot here for the wing that goes in. I think it's deep enough that it's not going to, but if I have some trouble, I may have to modify the wing so that it'll slide in here. So I'm just going to center it up and then mark, mark the foam. And I'm kind of going to go all the way around so that I got my general shape. And I'm going to cut just a little bit inside of this general shape. And then just the key with, with all the modeling really is do everything in little increments. That way you uh, don't mess up and have a huge opening right here. Okay, I'm going to switch to the mic on the uh, camera so I can move around a little bit so the sound's going to come and go a little. But what I've got is I've got my Dremel tool with my drill bit here and uh, I'm going to turn this kind of low at first and see what it's going to do to this foam. Then I'm just going to go straight in the middle and see how it's reacting to the foam. It looks like it's not going to work for you at that speed. It's cutting better at that speed. So then I'm just going to go in and cut right around that line. So 
now that I've kind of chunked it up there and got it in little slices, I'm going to see if I could just push some of them out. Just kind of pop these little chunks out of there. slowly but surely and that's the thing just take your time yeah. I made the one I'm going to test fit it here I think that's going to be good so I cut the other one I'm going to cut it the same so that's why I went ahead and cut this one first and I'll just mark the other side here since I made so many scratches on that other part and then we're going to let that completely dry and then we'll come back and route these out corners a little round. I'll probably have to cut this triangle off just a little and then uh, get that speaker in there, drill the holes, get it ready to be mounted, go ahead and get me a, some wire rigged up and see what I'm going to run, how I'm going to run the wires. This is thin CA. I actually couldn't get a hold of my foam safe so this is not and I'm just putting it on with an applicator. Really careful not to get it on anything else but the the wood and a couple little drops and I'm going to let that dry so let it sit there and dry for a couple minutes and then I'll be ready to go ahead and start on this back speaker so you can see this back one has worked perfect <laughs> once I get that uh, white painted put a little mesh over that that's going to look really nice uh, and you can see where I took my cutter and I just kind of rounded out each of those little corners that lets that speaker fit down in there nice and good and snug so that's done so now pretty much all we got to do as far as the speaker assembly goes is go ahead and paint this wide area so that we don't uh, see that and we'll get some insignia blue and paint that and then I got to put some screen over this and I'll just spray paint that screen the same color and then uh, lay that over put a little epoxy around there to hold it in place and then that'll be good for the speakers so then just some uh, speaker wire up in there back to the module and wire everything up at the module with some quick disconnects we'll be ready to go so on to the next step so I got my speakers mounted and I run some speaker wire through the back and through the front and I went ahead and made my connections there so I've got these in series together so that's my plus and minus I just used some uh, 3.5 millimeter bullet connectors and uh, then I took my board and put me a couple 3.5 millimeter connectors on there as well. For this, I went ahead and mounted this to a little plywood block and I used some little uh, hex head, uh, button head screws right there. What my plan is just to put some Velcro on the bottom of this, put Velcro on the bottom here. And I may take another little piece of plywood and glue right there and then put the, the Velcro between this because it seems like the uh, Velcro just won't stick to that foam. Even if I glue the foam uh, to the, the Velcro to the foam, it just won't stay. But if I'll cut me a little piece of plywood, glue that on there, and then put a strip of Velcro, it gives me more surface area to spread across. So I'll probably just put one half inch strip of Velcro right here. That'll give me, you know, if I cut the same size block down there, it'll give me quite a bit of surface area to glue to. Uh, and then just put the, the Velcro between the two plywood pieces and that should hold us in place just fine. So we got it hooked up, the sound system that is. We're just about to start actually, uh, I'm, I'm finishing up just kind of doing some wire maintenance uh, and then we'll actually put the airplane together. Um, so the sound system is sounding really good. I got the decimal meter out, cranked up the volume. Let's see what we can get. I'm gonna push my max button and it should give us a max now and hold that max so I can show this up to you. So I'm just going to start it, let it run up, get a little gas, see what it sounds like.
So we got, uh, of course, you know, this is, they say 106 dB, so definitely I can have that much difference in my meter. But uh, if you can zoom in on that, I think that uh, 101.8 decibels. That's pretty darn loud. Uh, you know, that I'm sure when they did their test for 106, it was optimal conditions. And again, could definitely have a 4.2 uh, decibel difference in my decibel meter. So, uh, wow, that's loud. Sounds really cool. Machine gun sounds cool too. It's, uh, I'm going to reset my uh, meter here. And uh, we'll see if we can get the max out of the machine gun sound. Wow, so the uh, machine gun's actually louder than the uh, engine, which is good, I guess, because we can hear that over the engine. 103.1. Uh, now I'll play my little music, which uh, actually I'll be surprised if it's near that loud. You know, this has got the Baba Black Sheep, or at least I think I'm running that right. Uh, I've changed uh, sounds so much here lately, but I'm giddy here, giddy. Downright giddy, can't you tell? I went ahead and killed it there. Uh, okay, so surprised again, folks. Look at that, 107.3, because maybe I got the microphone a little bit closer. It says within one meter. I was trying to keep away from it a couple feet, so not quite one meter, but at any rate, wow, it's loud, and it sounds really, really good. I hope that sound's coming across. Hopefully you guys have got some good uh, stereo speakers and your sound cranked way up because that sounds really well. And I'm using my lapel mic to pick up the sounds. When we get out to the field, we'll actually be using a, a couple different mics. I'll be using uh, the, the lapel mics, I'll be using the mics on the camera, and I'll also be using uh, a hand recorder, a professional recorder, uh, also trying to pick up sounds. And then we'll combine all three of those together and try to get the clearest, best sound we can get as it flies by. So that's what we're after. So the sound system is basically installed. I'll bring you over here and show you kind of what it looks like. Now I still got to do my wire management, so I've got my hot glue gun uh, fired up, and I figured out where everything I want everything to go. So uh, that's what we're working on. So let me bring you over here and uh, show you what it looks like. So yeah, we definitely uh, we got a mess right now at the moment for sure, right? We got wires everywhere. So what I did is I wired right off of that. I put me an EC5 connector on. And then I went, oh yeah, I was supposed to make a Y. So I wish I would have done that before I put the EC5 on, but I didn't want to take it back off. So I just tapped into it right there on both sides, uh, individually wrapped each one in electrical tape and then wrapped them together so that that gives stress relief to that wire. And then I'll rewrap that up and under and out of the way. And this wire here is my speaker wire from the front and the speaker wire from the back. Showed you that in the earlier part of the video. Uh, the 3.5 millimeter uh, buttons there plug us together to give our uh, sound for the circuit through the speakers. And then it's hooked directly up. I still got this switch in here. I'm probably just going to do away with this switch and have it directly to the power unit. I didn't get to ask David that question if it was okay to do. It seems to work. I hooked it up and just left the switch on and unplugged everything. It seems to be working every time, uh, but I want to try that. Another thing, David got a hold of me and said there was a new revision out for the board. So I'm actually going to pull the board out tonight and put the new revision of the uh, firmware on here. And there's a new version of the software to play with too. So I want to do some more playing with those sounds. Uh, this receiver I'm probably going to mount right here, uh, unless, unless I change my mind, I could definitely put it underneath the uh, push rods back here. We'll kind of see as we go together. So, and then we're going to continue to actually start putting the airplane together now. So the sound system is installed, unless the uh, wire uh, organization there, and uh, so far the sound system is going to be awesome. I can't wait to hear it out at the field. The next thing you'll see will be this thing put together. Just like that too. It's going to be like magic. Hey folks, so like I said, magic.
it's done. Really didn't take that long to put together. I did have a couple clevises break on me. One was broke out of the box and one broke while I was trying to get it on. Uh, right where the rod goes through the, the control horn broke right there on me. Luckily I've got another FMS plane because it actually uses a little bit smaller size clevis than like the Dubro clevises that I have in my field box. But luckily I had another one so I stole a couple off of that plane and I've called uh, Motion RC. Uh, was where I got both of these airplanes from and asked them to send me a couple of replacement clevises. So anyway, it looks like uh, everything's good. I've got one little glitch in a servo. Um, one of the flap servos, if I actually push on the servo, the actual shaft, like I noticed it when I was trying to put the screw in, it's, it starts glitching and it's kind of, it's, it's definitely, I can do it every time. Uh, but as long as I don't touch it, it seems okay. So it's kind of weird. I don't know. Uh, the prop went together well. I measured uh, each one of the uh, propellers. I weighted them with uh, my little meter that I actually measure gunpowder when I'm reloading with and put the heaviest ones opposite each other trying to, to make sure I got that as balanced as I could. And then I balanced the prop with a uh, Dubro balancer. I had to sand a little off of one of the blades to get it, but I think I'm pretty good and balanced on that blade now because I'd heard a lot of people talking about hub balance issues with the uh, big Corsair or the big propellers, the 17 millimeter uh, size propellers that comes with a 17 inch propeller. Um, so I balanced it as good as I could. It looks really good to me. All I had to do is sand, like I said, one of those blades down a little bit. And I could definitely tell I was off a gram or so on one of those blades when I was trying to get them uh, matched up. So I got everything ready to go. All I got to do is program my final control throws. Um, wipe it off a little bit where I've got some uh, sweat, blood, and tears on there from uh, putting it together out in the hot shop. Uh, but we're going to get it out now. We're going to get it out and actually drive it around a little bit. 